Hello and welcome to the Capitol Report on NTD Television. I'm Steve Lance. And special counsel John Durham today meeting with House Intelligence Committee members in a closed door hearing this afternoon. The meeting was to discuss his report on what he calls the FBI's seriously flawed investigation into connections between former President Trump and Russia. And today's Melina Wisecup hears from some of those Intel committee members following the meeting with Durham. So Melina, what did they have to tell you? So Chairman Mike Turner and ranking Democrat member Jim Himes did speak to reporters immediately following their meeting with special counsel John Durham. And it's interesting because there was a solid bipartisan consensus of both of the parties in the committee trying to understand the mistakes that the FBI made in their investigation into former President Donald Trump and solutions moving forward. Here's what they had to say. Great uh, camaraderie among our members uh, trying to find answers to uh, if there is misconduct, what are the what are the solutions, what are the reforms? I think that we were able to get some information that would be very helpful for us in the work that we have to do on both uh, FISA renewal, FISA reforms. And it's good committee in the room, good discussion. We helped each other out. Uh, the committee really was focused on particularly on something so sensitive uh, as an investigation that pertains to uh, uh, political candidates, how can we make sure that the behavior of the investigative authorities, in this case the FBI, uh, is beyond reproach? So the Durham report essentially says that the FBI made serious mistakes when launching that crossfire hurricane investigation into former President Donald Trump because they lacked sufficient evidence to even open the investigation to begin with. Instead, the information that the FBI did have was based on individual sources who were politically biased and those facts went unchecked. Even when the FBI did come across information that was contrary to that uh, information coming from those individual sources, they still dismissed it and continue to launch that investigation. Now, of course, we've heard from many Republicans. Um, they, they've pointed to this Durham report saying that it's proof that the FBI has used their power to target political opponents, specifically former President Donald Trump. Of course, this is a similar argument that we heard just last week during Trump's second arraignment. Now, the FBI has responded, acknowledging that they did make mistakes with that crossfire hurricane investigation, but have said they have since taken steps to prevent mistakes like this from happening in the future and have also said that the FBI officials involved in the crossfire hurricane investigation have left the FBI either by retiring, being terminated or having resigned. Now we have not yet heard from special counsel Durham, but he will appear later in the Judiciary Committee where that hearing will be public. Reporting from Capitol Hill, Melina Weiskup, NTD News. NTD's Melina Weiskup reporting for us from Capitol Hill. And President Biden's son, Hunter, pleading guilty to two tax crimes and has struck a deal with federal prosecutors to resolve a felony gun charge. And today's Iris Tao brings us more from the White House. And federal prosecutors charged Hunter Biden with failure to pay income tax and a felony gun charge of illegally possessing a firearm while knowing that he was addicted to using drugs. According to court documents, Hunter Biden is expected to enter a plea deal, basically pleading guilty to the two misdemeanor tax crimes. But when it comes to the felony gun charge, he's expected to enter what he calls a diversion program through which he could walk away with no jail time or even a felony record if he stays sober for two years and gives up the right to ever own a gun again. If you are the president's son, you get a sweetheart deal. Meanwhile, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy today criticized what he calls a two-tier justice system, and he vows to continue GOP's investigation into the Biden family and its business dealings. The DOJ should not be able to withhold any information now. But a top Democrat on the House Oversight Panel today called the charges against Hunter Biden a reflection of the DOJ's independence. And that's as former President Trump, who was indicted with 37 federal charges, and calls Hunter Biden's charges a mere traffic ticket. And today, President Biden said, I'm very proud of my son. A White House spokesperson says today that the president and the first lady love their son and support him as he continues to rebuild his life, while adding, we have no further comment. Meanwhile, although Hunter Biden's attorney says today's announcement marks the end to a five-year investigation into Hunter Biden, the DOJ later said on Tuesday that its investigation into Hunter Biden is still ongoing. Reporting from the White House, Iris Howe, NTD News.
And to react to Hunter Biden's plea deal, we just sat down with Congressman Tom Tiffany of Wisconsin. Congressman Tiffany offers his take on the allegations facing the Biden family, as well as Secretary Antony Blinken's recent trip to China. Congressman Tom Tiffany, thank you so much for joining us. It's good to join you, Steve. Congressman, I want to get your thoughts. Uh, Hunter Biden appears to have taken a plea deal with federal prosecutors uh, for some tax charges as well as gun charges. What is your initial reaction to this? I mean, I'll have to see all of the details on it, but I sure hope it includes prison time because especially I think about that Form 4473 that I've talked about in judiciary hearings. Um, people oftentimes serve uh, prison time. Uh, for that charge, and so I certainly hope that he's going to prison for that. And for an appropriate length of time, that would include comparisons to people that uh, commit those type of crimes across America, so hopefully it's, uh, it's similar in that way. What I'm really anxious to see, though, is are there going to be charges in regards to the Biden family and what they've done exchanging their name and position in our United States government for money that may have come from foreign interests? Are there going to be charges for that? Because that's ultimately the most serious charge. And to your point, Congressman, I think a lot of Americans are skeptical right now with the talk of there being a two-tiered system of justice. So are you heartened to see that at least there's something on the table here? You know, at least there's something there, but I hope, I mean, what was, if it is proven that there was money exchanged for the family's name from foreign interests, and there seems to be significant evidence to that point that uh, Representative Comer, Chairman of Oversight, is showing to the American public, if that's the case, that is a whole new level of crime by the Biden family. I hope we get to the bottom of that. Congressman, I also want to get your thoughts on uh, China. Uh, Secretary of State Antony Blinken just wrapping up his uh, high-stakes meeting with Chinese officials, including Chairman Xi Jinping. Um, have we come out of this uh, as a country, as a nation, stronger, weaker, or status quo? No, it certainly appears that we're weaker. I mean, Secretary Blinken is going over and kowtowing um, to the communist Chinese leadership. It's really unfortunate. I mean, when he gives the American people really weak sauce in regards to Taiwan. I mean, it's unfortunate, but I mean, this is how our government has negotiated with foreign interests, in particular our adversaries. They're very weak while they're very tough on some of the American people going after them with the Department of Justice and the FBI. It should be the other way around. Congressman, when it comes to certain issues, whether it be Taiwan, or human rights issues, when those issues are raised to the Chinese regime, they'll often say, oh, you know, you don't understand China, or don't meddle with our internal affairs. Um, mind your own business, essentially. What do you say to that? Well, let's go back to Taiwan. That's not part of their internal affairs. Uh, Communist China on the mainland has never had um, uh, hegemony, ownership, whatever you want to call it, of the island nation of Taiwan. They should not have that claim now. With, with regard to uh, human rights, um, how important is it to remind uh, the Chinese Communist Party um, that the world is watching them and their crimes against humanity? It's important that we do that every single day. And that's the thing that I suspect Secretary Blinken um, did not bring up forcefully. You know, contrary to somebody like Secretary Pompeo, who always stood America's ground, now we see this weakness that's happening. Because, I mean, they've been persecuting people in communist China for a long time. And we've seen that history, whether it's Tiananmen Square, whether it's the Falun Gong, whatever the case may be, we need to make it very clear that that's unacceptable. But especially now, as they're trying to export that persecution as we're seeing things like police stations around the world in uh, free countries, including the United States. Congressman Tom Tiffany, thank you so much. It's good to join you. Thank you for watching the Capitol Report. If you want to see our full broadcast, check us out at epochtv.com. <laughs>